Hey everyone, Jay here from Pistol Star for the final video in our series on designing and implementing a secure web portal. In this video we're going to be talking about some of the under the hood elements that while invisible to the end user can go a long way in determining their overall opinion and happiness with your portal. We've come a long way in a relatively short time with regards to things like system uptime, response latency, and the ease in which our data is backed up and made secure. The dial-up days are long gone, and with the advent of 5G cellular service and 802.11 AC routers, users have come to expect an incredibly fast and reliable experience when they're online. When you get ready to make the decision on how you host your web portal, understanding where your users are located and their primary entrance method becomes a key element in how you want to present your solution. Do you have a robust IT backroom that is capable of hosting your solution as an on-premises one? which is configured to be fully load balanced and failover protected? Or is yours a smaller IT infrastructure that may be looking at the cloud as a hosting solution because it offers you a high level of convenience and uptime guarantees that you might otherwise not be able to attain? What about your user base demographic? Are they central to a specific geographic location or are they scattered across a multitude of time zones? If you find a good portion of your user base is far afield, one of the greatest challenges to a centrally administered application quickly becomes latency response. How far does that data have to travel? And what's the average time between click to action? There's also a good set of considerations regarding a hybrid cloud approach. Some would argue that this is the best of both worlds and that you get both an on-premise solution that is a clone of your existing configuration and one that runs in the cloud and can offer specific advantages to those users that may fall out of your main geographic zone or even those that may only access your IT infrastructure through a web browser. What about server redundancy? Do you have a failover plan that allows for one server to take up the traffic if another goes down? And lastly, what about backups, which can be the bane of every IT administrator's existence? Backup intervals need to be consistent, repetitive, and in almost all cases saved in a separate, safe location as part of a good disaster recovery plan. Chances are you're very aware of these things and you're also painfully aware that a number of regulations dictate that you have and adhere to specific procedures like a data recovery plan. There are many industries that have been slow to move to the cloud based on their strict data security policies and there are others that have a higher degree of flexibility in this regard. Knowing where you fall on that spectrum is critical in making the proper decision. Lastly, don't forget that no matter how you choose to configure your solution, you always need to be aware of the cost implications of your choice. As more and more software solutions move to the cloud, there are compelling cost savings with regards to server and manpower costs that need to be factored into the equation. So there you have it. We've probably asked more questions than we've answered in this video series, but that was by design. As we said when we started this journey, web portals, especially those that offer a high degree of security and flexibility, all have unique design elements and requirements, their own fingerprint if you will. We hope this series has made you aware of some of these key aspects and given you some food for thought as you go about your implementation. Thanks for listening and check back with us on our YouTube channel often as we continue to provide insight and advice on security, authentication, computing trends, and hacking threats. This is Jay Osper, Vice President of Cloud Computing for Pistol Star. Be well, everyone.